how big a how big a region you wanted to see. Uh, the, the most bizarre case that we've had in Buncombe County, I'm, I'm getting ready to talk about. Those are the things that we've become aware of, but the thing that concerns me is I've heard two or three stories in here today to where we might not know, or we might have dealt with it to something that didn't generate an informational report or it didn't generate a, a crimes report because the statute had been violated, but it's something that really you guys need to have access to and know and that's, that's the reason why I think probably that SharePoint is a great option for you or if you develop your own informational system. And if you've got some site kind of security to it to where your, your realtors have to log in to have access, then you don't have to worry so much that I put something on there that I'm going to get sued them. That I put something on there that's, you, you don't have to worry so much about that uh, if you're limiting access to what, what goes on. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, as far as finding, you know, where everybody is, you know, if you're tracking your car and you're mentioning the tracking device, there are a lot of great apps on the phones right now. The Life 360, Find My Friends. Um, I happen to use them with my teenage son in case he's in a car accident, doesn't know what road he's on. So, you know, I tell him, you know, you don't have driving privileges without it, basically. Um, <laughs> And he's okay, he's okay with that, it doesn't bother him. But these apps, you can turn on and off so that somebody's not following you every single moment, so that if you were going out on a listing, you can turn the app on and that person can follow you that you're linking with, and then you can turn the app off when you want your privacy. That's a great idea. And they're really great apps. We use them all the time in my family. It's kind of like law enforcement. We talk about cameras and we're talking about uh, body cams as opposed to vehicle cameras. For us, it's imperative if we go to a video device for our officers, it's gotta be a body cam because we do 90% of our work away from the vehicle. So, you know, whereas the highway patrol probably does 90% around their vehicle, we're just the opposite. So your phone, you know, you can talk about a vehicle tracker, but I think this case in Arkansas, I think her vehicle was found at the scene, if I'm not mistaken. So. He, he basically took her and left the vehicle. So the vehicle tracker wouldn't have been a, a, a tremendous amount of use in that, that particular case. Next slide. Uh, this is young lady Beverly Carter that lost her life from Arkansas. What, what a tragedy. And a lot of times, you know, one of the things we we're talking about, we want to stress that this isn't just a relate, an, an unrelated thing that happens away from you. Uh, it can happen here just as quickly as it can happen anywhere. Almost did. Next slide. Back on April 20th of 2012, uh, let me give you the, uh, the situation surrounding this incident. Uh, there was a man by the name of Richard Vincent Ferry who lived in Logansville, Georgia. He got on Facebook the root of all evil, right? Facebook, just kidding. Kind of. He gets on Facebook and, and discovers that his wife is talking to somebody that she graduated high school with, who lives here in Buncombe County, who is a home repair contractor type person. Don't know much in the way of, of what all transpired because the person who was charged and the warrants are still outstanding here in Buncombe County because this person is deceased now, and I'll get to that in just a second. But he thought this individual was having an affair with his wife. So he comes to Buncombe County, he goes on, and we never did find out how many listings he looked at, but he found a home for sale in Woodfin. Don't know if he was familiar with Woodfin, is why he chose it, don't know why he chose it. But it was a manufactured house that had been built onto, it had a sliding glass door in the rear and a deck. And uh, I don't know if he was a previous B&E guy or whatever, but he knows that sliding glass doors without the, the, the sticks and the tracks are pretty easy to get into. He went to this house, broke into this house, called the guy who's the contractor who had been Facebooking his wife, told the guy he owned this residence, he, want, he was trying to sell it, needed upgrades made to that house, and lured that individual out to that residence in Woodfin got him inside, uh, had a set of handcuffs. We think he was trying to abduct him to get him back to Loganville so he could choose where he buried him. 
and uh, the guy never be heard of, right? Never be heard of from again. The guy uh, put up a fight. Uh, Mr. Ferry shot him twice. The guy managed to crawl out a bathroom window in a manufactured home. If you're familiar with those, or but, but he was highly motivated, and he got out that window <laughs> and got down to a neighbor's house. And uh, before they took him into surgery, we got enough information to figure out who this guy was off his phone because he'd been calling this individual. We knew what kind of vehicle he was in. It was a white Dodge pickup truck. We worked with Woodfin PD, very rapidly put together uh, a, a pretty good idea of what had taken place. We called Loganville PD. They go down to this individual's house and he engages them in a gun battle. Uh, two separate times he came out, they had an armored vehicle that they had their response team in. He fired on that vehicle on two separate occasions. Later that evening, I think in the first, first melee, the wife and the kid got out, uh, got out of the house. The second one, he came out, fired on the vehicle, and the police sniper ended it, and this guy was deceased. That all started in Woodfin at a at a house for sale. That's your house? It was my listing, yeah. Your listing. And, uh, well, it was uh, Captain Chaco up in our Weaverville uh, office, and I had it listed for rent also, and so, it was quite a mess to clean up. There was a lot of blood in that house. Oh, yeah. And that, that place was a mess. The guy had a 410 judge, which is a shotgun pistol, basically. He shot him in the arm, and it almost took his arm off. Oh, uh, my God. So that's basically, next slide says questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we've covered most of that stuff. If there's any final questions I can answer for you guys, be glad to do it. If not, I really appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. If, if there's something going on and we think somebody's in danger, there's a reason to believe that, you can call the sheriff's office and say, uh, my wife, uh, one of the realtors from our company, has gone out to show a house, went out by themselves. They're uh, not there. Did you have that happen? Yes. And did they tell you we couldn't do it? If they ever do that, I need to know that because that's not the right answer. They, they uh, told me when I called that there was nothing that could be done. Well, now, there's a difference in calling and reporting what you had going on than somebody calling and saying, our realtor is at the house and we can't get contact with them. We better be sending a deputy out there or that's, that's not going to be good. If you call and said, this guy's kind of creeped me out, this kind of thing and that kind of thing, there might not be much to be done there. But if, you, if, if somebody is out at a residence showing a house and you can't get a hold of them, you're afraid something's happened to them. Uh, the next call, my cell phone seven one two zero zero two six. You ever place a call like that, and they say we can't send anybody? You call me, and I guarantee you we can. Does APD share your um, your thoughts on that? I uh, can't speak for them. They're a good agency, a professional agency. I would hope so. I would be horrified to think that somebody had called the sheriff's office and said we've got a we've got a uh, real estate broker out here that we can't get on the line and she was showing a house by herself, we're afraid something's happened to her. I, I, it would absolutely horrify me to think that we refused to send somebody. That wasn't the case. No, oh, good. <laughs> we, we needed to talk. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If we're in a house and something dreadful does happen and the only ability and time we have is to dial 911 is there any do they is there ability for them to track where that call came from yes okay so if we if all we can do is dial 911 we can rest assured somebody knows something yes they can triangulate that phone call and under the right set of circumstances which would be what you're talking about we should be able to even if we can say nothing if we correct can just push the button in our pocket and just stand there and hope that nothing happens, you can still get it. Correct. What if GPS is off on your phone? Should we leave that on at all times? We can do it without GPS under certain circumstances. We, hey, that's the, you know, it's the big brother, they can find you with a cell phone and it's somebody's trying to kill me and they can find me by my cell phone. It's that kind of trail sort of thing. Uh, we have to have a certain set of, we can't just go in and arbitrarily locate where you are. It takes a certain set of circumstances or a court order and a subpoena to be able to do that. We just can't randomly decide we want to do that. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, 
Chair, my, my understanding is all old cell phones still have the 911 capability to them, even if you currently do not have an active. That's what I was told. I read an article on it recently. So for all the people who still may have their old flip phone from back the when or, or an old phone with their child or something, they may want to keep it in their vehicle or keep it somewhere in case if they do hand off their cell phone, there is a backup phone to maybe dial 911. As long as, as long as it's on to where it can make a call, the, the location does not come from any thing proprietary to the phone. It comes from the call signal. I had a situation recently where um, somebody had showed a house of mine that was vacant and they said some man came out and they obviously scared the realtor off, um, left me a message saying, you know, you might have somebody, you know, living squatting in the house. I immediately called the sheriff's department and there were two cars there with me in a matter of seconds. I mean, we were in that house. Well, I wasn't, I stayed outside. I don't lock the door like this. Those two went in, I didn't. Um, Good. But no, they were there immediately. It was, uh, I was very happy, very impressed. Very good. Any more questions, Mr. Sheriff? Folks, I hope I brought you something you can use that you can put into place. Thank you for your time this afternoon. I appreciate it.